Wow, what a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Hey guys and gals, welcome back to the shop. Well, over the next couple of videos, I'm gonna walk you through how to build this octagon picnic table. Now, for the longest time, I've always wanted to build an octagon picnic table, and I scoured the internet and scoured magazines looking for that perfect design. Well, I found this design in Woodcraft Magazine's Volume 10, their April-May issue, and it was an article written by Bill Sands, and Bill Sands did a great job with his table. Now, his table uh, was made out of cedar, and wow, did that thing look great when it was done. My picnic table is made out of pressure-treated pine, which was perfect for me, and it was quite inexpensive uh, to build. I think it was about $152 in material and then just my time to build it. Um, I want to thank Bill for doing such a great job with his article. It was easy for me to follow, and I hope that my videos here are easy for you guys to follow. Uh, so with that being said, let's go build a picnic table. All right, well, it's very hot outside, but it's a beautiful day, so I thought it'd be a great time to set up outside and do some work out here. Now, the frame parts, both the seat frame parts and the tabletop frame parts call for two by four stock. Um, the lower frame parts, the seat frames, call for uh, four 88 and 316 inch uh, two by fours. And at the end of those two by fours, it calls for the ends to be cut at 67 and a half degrees, which is equivalent to 22 and a half degrees. So I've got my miter saw set up on the tailgate of my truck, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those four parts down to the 88 and 3 16 And then the tabletop frame parts that are made out of two by fours, those are 48 inches long. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those down. And at the end of those boards, they also get 22 and a half degree cuts or 67 and a half. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start with the longer ones and the measurement is going to be from the long point to the long point on the uh, on the bevel. So let's go ahead and get started. Now after you make your first bevel cut and you flip the wood around to make your second to cut the board to length, make sure that you keep in mind the orientation of this first bevel cut. You want the bevels facing the same direction on each board.
All right, so now that I have my two by four parts cut down to size for the uh, frame, the table frame, the bo bottom and the top, you wanna go ahead and cut yourself eight of uh, these three and a half inch by three and a half inch two by four spacer blocks. Um, and uh, you need eight of those. So now before I go inside to do the finish cuts, uh, because we're gonna do uh, kind of a half lap joint on these uh, two by four stock here, so that the leg assembly can be assembled together in, in a uh, cross pattern. Um, before I go do that inside and all the assembly, I wanna go ahead and cut my two by six parts down to size. We're gonna start with the table legs. The table legs are going to be cut at a 30 or 60 degree angle on each end and they're going to be cut down to a finished length of 33 and an eighth inches long and we need four of those. And unlike the 2x4 table legs where the bevels were facing the same direction, this time we're going to have them face opposite directions on the table legs. And then we'll get into the seat bases and the seat legs as well. I want to go ahead and get all my uh, stock cut down to size out here before I move everything in for the finish and assembly. All right, so as I said before on our table legs that I just cut, uh, we want four of these. And they're going to be 33 and an eighth inches in length. And the bevel cuts are 60 degree bevels and they're going to be running parallel with one another. Okay, so now that I already have a bevel cut on the end of this board from the first piece that I cut off, all I have to do is slide down to my 33 and an eighth inch mark. Line myself up. All right, so now we're ready to cut down the seat bases and the seat bases are going to be back on a 22 and a half degree bevel on the ends of them, uh, 67 and a half, 22 and a half on the miter saw. Now, the bevel cuts are not going to be parallel with one another. They are going to be opposite, you know, facing basically the same direction. Uh, and they're gonna be 24 inches in length. I've got a 30 degree bevel on the end of this board because I'm still using the same board that I was cutting the uh, legs off of. Uh, I'm go ahead and make a fresh cut, get my measurement and cut my four pieces down to size. All right, so I got my 24 inch seat base here and notice the bevel cuts are running in the same direction. Uh, basically, after you make your first cut, Go ahead and flip the board over and make your second cut and that's what you need. Length is 24 inches and uh, we need three more of these. All right, so I went ahead and I moved inside because I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the cross frame parts for both the table and the seat. Now I've got the table cross frame parts laid out in front of me here along with the three and a half inch by three and a half inch spacer blocks. I got four of them. Now what I want to do is they're going to be laid out in a cross pattern and they're going to be half lapped. So I need to determine the width of the notch that's going to be cut out of each set. And in order to do that, I'll go ahead and set two of the spacers aside and two of the cross frame parts. Uh, we'll get those set aside. I want to take two of the cross frame parts and I want to put the spacers in between them. Doesn't matter where you put them right now. We just need to put them in between them so we can get the measurement of the spacing here and that's going to tell us how wide our notches have to be cut out of each of the parts. So I'll go ahead and clamp those together and then I want to measure and I want to get this measurement as accurate as possible because I don't want any play in my half lap. So I've got 
about four and nine sixteenths. Make sure that's consistent all the way down. Four and nine sixteenths. So I'll go ahead and for now I'll write that on these parts. And I'll go ahead and I'll get the measurement of the spacing between the other two just to make sure that they're the same. And if they're different, then I will cut them accordingly. All right. All right, in order to cut the notches on the cross frames, I went ahead and set up two stop blocks on both sides of my table that will allow me to register the notches for all four of the uh, frame pieces. And I've got a dado stack in my table saw. It will allow me to get through it a little quicker. You don't have to have a dado stack. You can use a chisel you know, to, to take out the notches. You can use a skill saw. You can use your table saw with a single blade. I'm just going to use the dado stack because I have it. So I've got everything registered and set up. I've got all my marks on all of my pieces. And now the only thing left to do is cut them out. All right, once you have all your notches cut out for your frame parts, we can go ahead and put it together. You want to make sure that when you put your frame parts in, that you're working on a flat surface. You want to make sure that you have no rocking when the uh, parts are assembled together. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and space these out between those notches. We want to take our... Um, spacer blocks are three and a half inch by three and a half inch spacer blocks. I'm going to go ahead and get those into position on all four sides. And some of them will take a little bit of persuasion. Where this comes in handy. Voila. <laughs> all right, once all the spacer blocks are in place and everything's ready to go, it's a matter of screwing it all together. Now we want to <clears throat> make sure that we pre-drill our holes and we want a countersink. We're gonna use three inch exterior grade screws uh, for this and we're gonna put two on each side where this notch is. And then we want two screws on each face going into those spacer blocks. And a good way to make sure that those screws pass each other instead of hitting each other is one of the tips that was in the plans I'm using is to get yourself a three and a half inch by three and a half inch piece of scrap wood. Go ahead and pre-drill two holes uh, at a diagonal and use that to drill your holes on one side and then flip it over and drill your holes on the other side. That way the screws pass each other and they don't hit each other. And it's a good little tip. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, so once the lower frame is glued and assembled and everything's screwed together, we want to repeat the same steps 
for the upper frame too, the tabletop frame. And when those two frames are together, we can now move on to the seats and get the seat bases and legs and everything uh, built up because they're going to be attaching to this larger lower frame. So let's go ahead and move over to that now.